Hi guys, welcome to another video here in my channel and today's video is all about story time plus Q&A portion. So before I came here in Canada, I was working and living in the Philippines. Uh, I was working as a, a trainer for communication skills and product specific or uh, product training. And so yeah, that's what I did. Um, and I was doing that job for, I would say eight years. As soon as I graduated from college, I started working in the call center and I've stayed in that industry and I just, love working at a call center so the story that i'm going to be telling you now is my story as a trainer or my life as a trainer but not basically everything that happened to me as a trainer i will not be telling you everything about that but just some highlights and i will be answering questions coming from my previous trainees okay so let me start by talking to you about how I started. So of course, just like everybody else in the training team, I started as a customer service representative. So as an agent, I took calls and for the specific company, I took calls for about, I would say one year and a half. One year was being a customer service representative and uh, I would say six months for being a tier two representative. So tier two, means you take in supervisor calls. If customers want to talk to supervisor, then I, I took that call. And um, if there are agents who need your help or want to consult about something product related, then uh, they call that department. And yeah, I took those calls too. So after a few months of or six months of working as a tier two representative, I applied for this post, uh, training post from the same company, the same program. So it was easy for me because I've already gained that knowledge, you know what I mean, the product knowledge that um, is needed, okay? So I applied and I got in and yeah, so that's how it started. It wasn't easy, it was really challenging at the beginning because like I said, I didn't have any training experience before or teaching experience, so I had to learn it from there. Um, observing other trainers and going through or taking courses that actually helped me you know develop that skill so facilitation skills coaching skills I had to attend training lessons I had to go to a different site just to learn all the skills about coaching and communication skills it's very important um, you have to be able to communicate fluently in English oral and written so you have to have that English proficiency level so I also had to attend training and it wasn't that easy but I guess based on my experience working in a call center for like a few years before I started working as a trainer that really helped me a lot because I have been communicating and using the language on a daily basis at work um, they don't just hire people from the outside I mean outside of the company uh, you have to start as an agent you have to take the calls for you to become an expert and I remember one of my trainees asked me before, and this happened during my first year um, working as a trainer. She goes, Spice, is it required for trainers to wear high heels and dress up like that? And I'm like, what do you mean dress up like that? Well, because you always dress up really nice and you always look good. You always look sharp. Yes, because my um, training manager at that time wanted us to wear heels because it, I think, I mean, wearing heels adds up to your looks, overall look. And there's this old saying that if you look good, you feel better, which is true, because it actually gives you self-confidence. In my opinion, dressing well is a way to express our individualism, our character, our personality, and it helps us stand out from the crowd. And as a trainer, it draws the right kind of attention, respect, and credibility. And you know, just be professional and look professional. Those trainings that I attended made me become who I am right now. And so I owe it all to that company. Should I say the company? Should I say it? Convergence. <laughs> yes, so I'm so thankful for that. So yeah, I would say that the company honed me to become one of the best of the best. Working in the call center industry is very stressful and so us working as a trainer. You have to deal with different kinds of people like every after a few months. 
new set of trainees and yeah it's one of the things that i had to deal with and i can't even tell you the level of stress that i got from working as a trainer but i'm not complaining now i'm just expressing and telling you how stressful it was and sometimes i don't know it could even go beyond like stress levels up above my head right so i don't know how else to explain it <laughs> i know that i've said the word stressful a lot in this video but that's the reality of it i just learned how to manage it well and you know work life balance too now there's one thing that you need to be able to do quickly when you have back-to-back -back classes is to memorize your trainee's name that was easy for me um i mean that was easy uh when i was just starting like in like in the first few years of working as a trainer i would say first four four years it was easy memorizing their name getting to know them after so many years i was already struggling i was having a hard time memorizing names because of so many people that I've met <laughs> and had to talk to and deal with every single day of my life. And it's crazy when you have a class, a, tra a training class of um, 25 or 30 people. And talking about day one orientation or introduction, I always have to say as one of the disclaimers that I always have this poker face or default phase. <laughs> That's how I always, so how I usually say it. Um, so I have that, this poker face. Um, I don't know why, but in the inside, I feel like I'm smiling, laughing. I feel like I have emotions, but the outside doesn't show it. Now, despite the fact that I always had this poker face or RBF, you know what it means, right? Um, I had trainees crushing on me, which I find really weird. And I'm sure that a lot of trainers out there could relate to this. Minsan nagiging jowa pa nila yung trainee nila by the end of training. Or minsan nga, habang nasa training pa. Marami akong kilala ganyan. <laughs> and now let's move on to the fun part of this video. Q&A. Let's start with the first question here. So the first question is from Francis. Um, he wants to know what are the food habits that most people love yet you find weird? Um, if I'm understanding this correctly, food habits, this is about food combination, weird combination. I think it's eating tuyo and champurado. The second one is dinuguan and puto. I don't eat dinuguan but I love puto so I will never eat dinuguan with puto or puto with dinuguan. It's just weird. And I think the last one is adobo with ketchup. I love adobo. It's my favorite Filipino dish. But I don't really like ketchup. So I will never try that. Moving on to the next question from Sal. Ano pong shade ng lipstick gamit mo? Brand din po, please. Well, my go-to lipstick or my favorite uh, go-to lipstick shades are red, classic red, and mauve. I think mauve. Am I saying it right? Um... It's like brownish, light brownish, and pinkish shade combination. Brand doesn't really matter to me for as long as tumatagal siya, tapos there's consistency, and um, there's high pigmentation, and it's matte. I love matte lipstick, so yeah. If I'm gonna name some brands, I use Maybelline, Colourpop, L'Oreal, what else? Avon, I use Avon too. Next question is from Melissa. Ano po skincare mo? <laughs> ano po preferred? Ano po prefer mong style or OOTD? Um, I do have skincare. It's day and night skincare. Simple lang. Um, hindi magarbo. Basta yung meron kang day cream. My, my skin gets really dry. Uh, especially when I, I moved here in Canada. Uh, the weather was crazy cold. So, nagda-dry yung skin ko. So, I have to put moisturizer a lot. So, I have day cream moisturizer before I put makeup on. You know, nighttime, I remove my makeup and then I just, you know, put clay mask and then I put a night cream, yung mga pang anti-aging, mga ganyan. Age-defying, kasi alam niyo na, tumatanda, nagkakaedad na. <laughs> Pero, yeah, if you want to see a skincare video, um, I can up just let me know and I'll upload one video for you. Preferred style or OOTD? Well, it depends on my mood for the day. Um, but I don't normally wear fitted um, clothes, skin-tight clothes. I don't wear that. I used to do that. 
But of course, syempre naging conscious na tayo sa katawan natin. I avoid wearing clothes like that. Yung mga fitted, yung pa sexy, mga ganon. But if we're talking about work OOTD, it has to look nice and professional. Yun lang yun. Okay. Um, moving on to another question. So, ape, this is from April. Um, she said, I was never your trainee, but I was one of your previous co-worker. I have tons of questions for you. Ha ha ha. Oh my gosh. Um, the first one is, what do you despise the most for being a trainer? Um... Um, it's when I had to terminate an employee for violating employee code of conduct or they didn't meet the requirements to be endorsed or to pass uh, for the program scorecard. Number two, may pinaiyak ka na ba na trainee sa at and I think so. I just, I just can't remember right now. But yeah, I recall a few. Number three, may nagpaiyak na ba sa na trainee? Yes, meron na. Alam mo yung sobrang busit na busit ka, sobrang galit na galit ka, or stressed out ka na, tapos may mga trainee ka na hindi sumusunod, na hindi ginagawa yung dapat nilang gawin. Doon ako naiiyak. So, naiiyak ako sa so sobrang galit. Sobrang frustration. Yan, si Kim Sangil at saka si... <laughs> Oops, sorry. <laughs> Next question. What type of trainer are you? Strict or lenient? I'm a strict trainer. Alam niya ng mga naging trainees ko. Hmm? Right? You know it. <laughs> okay, so next. If you will be given a chance to work for Sutherland Canada, would you still want to be a trainer or would you rather move up to the ladder and take a managerial post position? Wow. Um, thank you for that wonderful question. <laughs> Universe. Absolutely. I'd love to go back and work for Sutherland again. Um, Sutherland is a good company. Um, this company took care of me and um, provided me with all the trainings and development that I needed. Um I want to be a trainer again. Um, but if there's a chance, an opportunity to move up or get a higher position as trainer, so maybe a supervisor or I'm not sure about training manager. But yeah, I would take that opportunity and do it. Now let's move on to the last one. Um, this is this question. These questions are from RJ Ralph Justin. Um, kung meron kang naging paborito ng trainee noon, sino ito at bakit si RJ? <laughs> loko loko ka. Um, meron naman ako mga naging favorite trainees in the past, and um, yung la so yung last ko nga was yun si RJ. <laughs> alam na alam niya eh. Wala kasi mat matalino, may sense ka usap, alam mo yun. Um, tsaka nakakatawa, masayang kasama, entertaining, baliw din kasi. <laughs> so yun, yun lang yung mga gusto kong kasama, may sense ka usap at tsaka baliw. Um, ano ang pet peeve mo bilang isang trainer? Ito yung kapag nagsiset up kami ng accounts, creating login and password, every time a trainee locks out a password, dun namumuling tenga ko minit yung dugo ko alam mo yun ang nang, nanggigigil ako pero hindi naman ako yung talagang galit, galit. Um, and I tried my best to stay calm and just be professional you know what did you struggle with as a trainer and on you know keeping your trainees complete from day one of training until I would say 90 days after production after training I'd say we call it net throughput so I struggled with my attrition but you know I tried I did my best but you can't control them right you can't stop them from leaving if they want to switch jobs or switch industries or if they have other plans or something came up you can't stop them from leaving so last question who from all of your trainees are you most proud of and why are they idol yata nila ako hindi ko alam ano mo sasabi mo Kim Sangil and RJ pero yun yun sa tingin ko yeah, I'm proud of RJ, siyempre. Um, masyado lang siyang social butterfly kung saan saan napupunta. <laughs> but I'm, I'm glad that um, he's in training. Alright, so those are the questions that I had from my previous trainees. And thank you for participating and posting your questions on that Facebook post that I made last week. And I appreciate all your support on this. <laughs> that was fun. I had fun. 
So if you like the variety of videos that I'm uploading every Friday, I recommend that you subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell right beside it so you're notified as soon as a new video is uploaded. And I just want to tell you guys that I appreciate all the love and support that you've shown me by watching all of my videos. So this has been your Girl Spice. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on my next video. Bye!